Karen Smith is with me today to talk about attracting birds to our yard for nature study with bird feeders. Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. You know, when we encourage people to get started with nature study, we often say, start in your own yard. Well, there's a great way to attract birds to your yard, and that's using bird feeders. Today, Karen Smith is with me to talk about bird feeders and which ones to use and all of the ins and outs of bird feeders. Welcome. (laughs) At least when I know. Yeah, well, you know a lot. I mean, (laughs) how long ago did you, how many years have you had bird feeders in your yard? Oh, well, since I was a teenager, actually. So in our current house... Almost 30 years. All right, so I think you know so, a little bit that you can share with us at least. <laughs> you know, I mean, first let's talk about different types of bird feeders. I know you don't just have one little thing. You've got several different types, I right? I have several for different reasons. Um, I, have a, I have two tray feeders because I have feeders in my front yard and my backyard. Okay. So anywhere I look out the window, I can see birds. So tray feeders or platform feeders that basically just what they sound like. It's a tray that you put seed on. And that that type of feeder, practically any type of bird and squirrels and chipmunks will come too. <laughs> so, do, do you try to keep squirrels and chipmunks away or do you let them at it? I have different feeders that are harder for them to access, but also the tray feeders where Everybody is welcome. That's free for all. Yes. Okay. All right. You can't deter them, so just work with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. It's <laughs> really what you have to do. All right. So what other types of feeders do you have? I have um, some that are made. Um, I have a wire mesh ball that I put seed in. That's one of those that the squirrels and chipmunks have a hard time eating from because you can only get one seed at a time, and there's no perches. So they have to figure that one out. I have a peanut feeder that's also made out of metal, and it's got little holes in it. It's a tube with holes in it so that woodpeckers, chickadees, nuthatches, and those sorts of birds can per- they can cling to it and work a peanut out. And suet feeders, are the, those are the ones that I currently have out. Have you ever done hummingbird feeders? Oh, yes. I have hummingbird feeders also. You do also? Out. Yes. Okay. And I remember my oldest, when she was doing a lot of bird feeder stuff, she had something like a thistle feeder. Yes. It was almost like a sock, I think, if I yes. remember correctly. Yes. I've had those before, too. Um, those attract different finches and finch-type birds. And if those birds aren't coming to your yard, even if you faithfully keep that feeder out, the seed just goes to waste. So I, I've i had times when I have those types of birds in my yard, and they eat that seed. It's thistle or niger seed is the official name of it. And I can't keep it stocked. And then I have other times where the sock just sits out there and nothing eats it. <laughs> and so I've I've taken those down right now because... I was just wasting the seed. Yeah, you don't want it to mildew and all that. Right, stuff you have too. to keep it clean. You can't just leave it out there and it's you know exposed to rain and the weather and. So it sounds like, do you wait and see what kinds of birds there are and then feed them their food of choice, or do you put something up because you want those birds to come, or a little of both? A little of both. Um, the seed that will attract the most birds. To your, to your house will be the black oil sunflower seeds. Most of the birds will eat those, and they, nothing will be wasted. I also use um, the peanut feeder that I mentioned, and that attracts woodpeckers, nuthatches, chickadees, those types of birds that can cling, and they really like the nuts. But other birds will not take those. So that's a very specific one. Okay. Um, the niger seed, the thistle seed, is right. also very specific for a type of bird. So I suppose, as you said, you could do either way. If you see certain birds, then and you want them to stay in your yard mm-hmm. longer, so you can observe them longer, then you can provide that type of food for them. Yes. And 
if you wonder if you could attract some of the other kind, then try that feeder for a little while. How long do you think you would need to try it? You need to try for a little while, and it depends on what time of the year you put it out. True. Um, <laughs> birds coming to your feeder varies throughout the year. When it's nesting season, you may have a lot of birds coming because they need the extra energy for feeding their young and being able to have the energy to go find what they need to feed their young. Mm. But when you get into the heat of summer, the number of birds might decrease because now berries are ripe and other food sources are available, and so not as many come. And so it varies throughout the year. So I would keep them out for at least several months to see if you, if you attract anything with those feeders. Okay. Now you talked about the black oil sunflower seeds, mm -hmm. and you talked about suet. Oh, yes, I have suet feeders too. And so you those... talked about the niger... Thistle the seed. thistle cedar niger. And peanuts. And you talked about the hummingbird mm -hmm. feeder. There, if you just go to a store and say, I need some bird seed, usually you get those little teeny tiny round balls and a the few millet. sunflowers. Oh, yes. Is that okay. what it is? And a few yes. sunflowers are mixed in. I don't even know what those little balls are. Yes. But it's just like a mixture. It's a mix. A bird Bird seed mix. Is that a, what kind of bird seed do you think is the best? Black oil sunflower seeds. Just plain, you, nothing yes. else mixed in. You buy the mixes. What happens? Are the birds eat the sunflower seeds, and they knock most of the other stuff on the ground, and you just waste it anyway. Do does anybody so, pick up what got knocked on the ground? Very few. Oh wow. Okay. So, <laughs> so you're wasting your money. You're wasting your money. Black oil, black oil sunflower seeds are the ones that most birds will come to, and they will eat those without the waste. Okay. All right. Is there anything else we should avoid when it comes to feeding the birds? You know those, uh, those fun little kind of crafty projects that they have for kids where you take oh, a yeah, pine, the pine cone, cone and you roll, roll it in peanut, peanut butter, butter mm -hmm. and, and then in the seeds and, cake it and you seeds. put a piece of yarn on it and hang it in the tree. Yep. No birds come to those. Oh, really? <laughs> don't, don't waste your time. Get an actual bird feeder and attract the birds that way because the birds, chickadees and, and nuthatches and woodpeckers can feed from things that don't have a perch. But if you want to attract cardinals and some of the finches, they, many of those need a place to perch. So help the birds out. <laughs> now, I love the bird feeder that um, it would be your son, my daughter, and our shared grandchildren yes. have at their house that's attached to the window. Yes. Talk about that a little bit. So you can get all different kinds of bird feeders. We talked about the tray feeder, the peanut feeder. Um, I have the one that's the wire mesh ball. And those come in different shapes, too. You can give them bowel shapes or whatever. Um, there's also the traditional type that you that you think about that, um, I don't even know what they call them. I don't know. But they, you put the seed in, and they've got a cover on them, and there's perches around uh, that type of feeder. Many people use those, the suet feeder, of course. But then there's the ones that attach to your windows. And those can be great for people who maybe, maybe you live in, in an apartment and you have a balcony. You can attach one of those to the window, to the balcony. I know you usually have sliding doors or something like that, but usually you have a side that you can attach a, a feeder to. Or you can get ones that attach to your deck railing. So there's different options if you live someplace where you don't have a place you can hang a feeder. Mine are hanging on, um, they're hanging on poles that are designed to hang your plants on or your bird feeders on. So it's a metal pole you drive into the ground and it's got hooks on it. So Now the one that you attach to your window, does it have a mirror so the birds cannot see in or is it just a... I think, I think it's just a blank one. Okay. And the birds become used to your movement. All right. That's what so, I was wondering, if it would yes. scare them off. Yes. But they become used to they it. They become and... used to it, and they, they don't. I've had, they become used to a lot of things. 
over the years I've had where my dogs can be near the feeder, underneath the feeder where it's hanging, and the birds hop all around on the ground next to them or will be on the feeders above them, and they pay no attention to the dogs because they know the dogs aren't going to do anything to them. So they become used to a lot of things. <laughs> wow. So if someone wanted to get started with bird feeders, where would you tell them to start? The black oil, sunflower seed. Pick a feeder that, that you like. Some people like something that's more decorative. I don't care because I just want to attract the birds. So, you know, if, if a wire mesh ball is good for you, get that. If a tray feeder works better for you, get that. If you have limited space and you want to bring the birds up close, get one of those feeders that suction cups onto your window. Whatever suits you. Now, I know you also have a bird bath of yes. type, you know, because providing water, I think you have mentioned before, is important. Yes. The birds come for the water. Some birds will come for the water that won't come for the seeds. Mm. And you can get, I actually have four different water sources. One in is your pond. I have my pond, yes, uh -huh. which has um, shallow places in it so the birds can bathe in it and they, they get drinks out of it. I have a more traditional decorative bird bath, and that's what I started with. I have, you know the, those trays that you put underneath pots for plants? Yeah. yeah. I have one of those that just sits on my deck, and it's, it's pretty shallow, and I put water in that, and the birds love that. And then I have one that's heated for the winter time. It's just heated enough that the water doesn't freeze, so the birds so have. So it's not a water like jacuzzi source. heat, <laughs> right? It's, yeah, the, the birds do not have a, I, I just a hot see tub. these birds sitting yeah, there in their hot tub. Yeah, yes. exactly. Though they do bathe in it, which is amazing with the snow around it. Oh wow! <laughs> so it's kind of fun to watch. But the of those four sources, the one that gets the most use is that plant tray. Just that simple little saucer. Yes, and I just leave it on the deck, and the birds love that. And that one is, is good because it's so shallow. Smaller birds will also bathe in it, where they can't bathe in the traditional ones. They're a little too deep for them. So, I now, mean, it's simple. Get it a plant is. tray. Put it on your deck. Put yeah. it in your, on your patio. And just keep water in it. And just keep water in it, yes. Now, when you talk about seeing the birds bathe... I'm thinking, wow, that would be so interesting to watch. And there must be a lot of nature study. I mean, the whole purpose of this is to do nature study. Yes. So how do bird feeders and bird baths help with nature study? Well, one of the most important things is they do bring nature closer to your window so that you can observe it and you can observe from inside. So attracting birds to your yard is something that allows you to do nature study year-round. On those really hot summer days and nobody wants to go outside, or on those cold wintry days, the birds still come. So you can see them from inside your house. You don't have to bundle up to go out or melt in the heat when you go out. So that is a benefit. And also, as I said, squirrels and chipmunks, and at night you can also have other things come. So <laughs> be aware of that. Um, As in raccoons and possums raccoons, or something? Um, and this year, surprise, surprise, I have a southern flying squirrel coming to my feeders at night, which is a really cool thing. Wow! <laughs> so you never know what's going to come to your feeders. Yeah. But the having the, the feeders there so you can see from your window, you can attract a variety of birds. Mm. And more than you might think at first. You might start with just the house finches and the house sparrows, but they're birds too. Let's, let's feed those. Yeah. But as you have your feeder out for a longer time, and especially if you have the water, and if you can have some movement to that water, a drip, even just a dripping sound will attract more birds. Oh. And in our yard, I forget how many, but my daughter is my bird watcher, my dedicated bird watcher. And she has seen almost 100 birds just in our yard. 
as in a hundred different, different types of types birds? Different types of birds. And some of those only come once or twice during the year during migration. So she's observing all of this. But the, having the pond with the waterfall and the sound of water has attracted many birds to the yard. The warblers come in the springtime. They're attracted to that. So start small, and you can gradually build over the years if that's something that delights you. But it certainly, you will observe a lot how birds move, the different ways that different birds drink, how they bathe. Oh, that's interesting. How they, how they eat the seeds. Do they stay at the feeder and eat it? Do they take a seed and go, some, go off someplace else to eat it? And when they take it someplace else, how do they open that seed and eat what's inside? There's so much to observe. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing about your, all of your knowledge. See, you had a lot of knowledge <laughs> about birds and bird feeders. And um, it's exciting to see how we can, as you said, with something very simple, mm -hmm. really ramp up the opportunities for nature study in our own yard. That's great. Thanks. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe. We'll put a link in the show notes to the episode where we talked about Karen's pond, so you can see pictures of how she made that in her yard. We hope that this will help you as you attract lots of birds to your yard for nature study. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.